So if you're a content creator or a streamer, there's a very good chance that you'll probably need to capture some sort of video at some point in your career. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a very cool capture card from a company called Pengo. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we're looking at a 4K HDMI PCIe capture card which goes into the motherboard of your PC and what it allows you to do is to capture the video signal from your DSLR camera but also it can capture something like the video signal from your Xbox or PlayStation and then pass that signal through to your monitor so you can stream and capture that video, play games and share that with your audience maybe on YouTube or Twitch. If you guys like this kind of content then chuck it a like, get subscribed and let's begin. So today with this video, we're gonna break it down into sort of three chapters. First part, we're gonna be going through the product and the features and how much it costs. Second part is how to actually install it into your computer. And then the last part is how to configure it in something like OBS, so you can capture that signal, get it optimized, and then upload it to something like uh, YouTube or Twitch. So the company Pengo, you may not have heard of them. You've probably heard of other companies like Elgato, but Pengo is in the video capture I guess product category and what they make is some really, really affordable, good quality capture products that I've been using for a long night, long time now to capture the video signal from my Sony a7S II to stream to YouTube. And today we're gonna to be sort of looking at some of their other products. This one that I'm really excited about though is their 4K PCIe capture card that can capture 4K 60 HDR. So if you're wanting to play um, like with your Xbox or your PlayStation and you don't want any bottlenecks at all and you want to be able to share that with your viewers, with your community, this is going to be a device that you can do that with. It costs around about $270 here in Australia right now. And if you compare that to something like from Elgato, that can cost uh, for the same features to do the same thing over $400. So it's a very, very um, good value product if you want the absolute best of the best for streaming and sharing that with your community. Now, what does a capture card essentially do? The way that you need to sort of think about capture cards is it's taking a video signal from something like your console, from your PlayStation, Xbox, or your DSLR camera. It's capturing that signal in Windows and then it's converting it into a way that Windows can understand it and then stream that or share that, upload it with something like OBS to a platform like YouTube or Twitch or whatever platform that you're using to stream, Facebook for example. So in a sense, like a TV is a capture device. If you've got your Xbox going into your TV, right, your TV is capturing that signal and then you know, you're know you viewing it through the screen. What this is doing is it's a device that you can put into your computer so you can capture your signal from a console, from a camera, upload it, through your Windows PC to something like Twitch or YouTube. So it's sort of doing the conversion, right? So that's essentially what a capture card does. So this product is obviously meant to go into a PC as well. So if we have a look here at the actual capture card, you can see we've got a really nice black aluminum heatsink here. We've got those PCIe connectors. Um, on the back side is essentially just the PCB for the uh, capture card. So very, very simple, but this heat sink here is going to allow this product to stay nice and cool when it's really working hard capturing that video input. And then if we look at the actual inputs and outputs of the, um, of the card here, so like I said before, you've got that input, which is for capturing the video signal, and then the output, which is to loop back into pardon me, the monitor, so you can actually go ahead and you know monitor the gameplay or play the PlayStation or Xbox, whatever you're doing without any added latency. Very, very simple, really nice looking um, card, but this will just go into the motherboard of your computer. Um, plug and play, no drivers are really necessary. Windows will detect it, configure it, and then all you need to do is, um, which is what I'll show you, is how to configure it in OBS to capture that video signal. All right, so what you're seeing at the moment, this is the inside of my PC, my personal one that I use for streaming and making all of these videos. Um, obviously, the inside of every computer is going to be slightly different, but what you want to try and find with a motherboard for this PCI capture card, if you can see here, you've got these little, uh, little teeth, right? This is the PCI Express connector. And then on your motherboard, if you can sort of see right in here somewhere, you should have a connector that sort of matches up with those two little teeth, right? So you wanna remove, first of all, if there's a piece of metal here that's gonna block um, something like a capture card, 
going into here, you want to remove that out. So that should be pretty straightforward. There'll be a, secu uh, a security screw or a screw here that you might need to remove. And then once you've got your capture card, if you're holding it by the edges, you sort of just want to try and go ahead and, you know, you can use the back of your graphic card if you've got it there to sort of just line it up and then just give it a push and it should just go straight in. So just like that. So that's basically in now. And then all we need to do is, you know, basically push the little IO uh, bracket here to a point where we can just put a screw in and secure it. And that's literally it. So now on the other camera angle, what you can see hopefully is the HDMI in and the HDMI out. So your console or your DSLR camera is going to go to the in. If it's a camera, that's all you need to do. But if you're looping the video signal out, so like your console or something, you wanna plug your monitor into the out. So I'll just go through that again. Your DSLR or your uh, console is going to go into the in. And then if you're wanting to loop the video signal out to your monitor, you wanna plug it into the out. All right guys, so here we are, a bit of a uh, other side of the camera, so you can get a bit of an idea of how the streaming setup currently looks, and also so I can show you how I've actually got the HDMI cable going from the, uh, from the DSLR camera into the capture card into the PC, so you can use this as a bit of a rough, I guess, guide to do something similar for yourself. So let me flip the camera around and I'll show you how that works. Okie doke, so what we've got here is obviously, you know, my whole streaming setup, the two monitors, the microphone, mouse, iMac, the whole, this is basically my setup, right? So here we've got the Sony DSLR camera, which is what I use to make all of my videos and do my live streams. We've got a dummy battery connector going in just to give it continuous power. But the most important part is this part here. So this is the micro or mini, I can't remember which one it is, um, HDMI connector going into the camera. And then if we basically follow that cable down, right, and we've got the back of the PC here, and if we squat right down, we can see a whole bunch of connectors. So this one here where my finger is on, this is actually that cable, right, which is going up to the camera. So this is going into the input, right? Kind of can't see it there. I'll try and get it in focus. So you've got HDMI in, and then next we've got HDMI out. So for example, if this was a Xbox or a PlayStation, right, and you wanted to loop that out to one of the monitors, you would use that output connector to go to your monitor. So in for the capture, out to loop out to your monitor. Down the bottom here, I've got my other display port connectors for both of those monitors, because I'm not doing that. I'm literally just capturing the one source, and then I've got you know all my USBs and everything else. So that's how to basically go ahead and get your DSLR camera configured to the PC. You might be wondering why there's such a high difference and that's because by the way this is a standing desk so don't mind the cable mess but I have to sort of allow for a bit of extra slack there because this desk can go up and down. Obviously when I stream I have it usually down but I you know like to have, um, have the option available. So that's how to go ahead and get it configured from the camera to the capture card. And again, very, very similar process if you're doing a console. Obviously you won't have your console mounted up on a tripod, maybe you'd have it you know, on the little side here. Um, but basically console goes into the input and then loops out to either one of your monitors. So what I'll do now is clean this mess up a little bit, get the camera fired up, get into Windows 10 on my PC, show you how to configure the capture card in something like OBS, which is a broadcasting software, I guess, program or utility. So you can show you my settings that you can use um, to go ahead and broadcast or something like YouTube or Twitch. All right, guys, so we're here in the streaming setup. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking you through a guide on how to set up the 4K PCIe capture card from Pengo in a program like OBS, which is a very popular program for, you know, streaming and recording your gameplay or, you know, creating content if that's what you're doing. Um, it's completely free and there is a link down below to OBS if you want to go ahead and download it and get it installed. But once you're at this point now where, you know, you're, you're ready to sort of add the device in as a capture card, what you want to do is you want to go into your sources area, okay, and you want to click the plus button and then choose video capture device because that's literally what the category of device it is that we've plugged in, okay? So we're going to click on video capture device. We're going to choose 4K. We're actually going to give it a name, I should say. So we're going to call it 4K Pango PCIe. 
The reason why you want to give it a name is just so that we've got some sort of way of knowing what it is, you know, in case you've got multiple capture cards. Um, so press OK, and then it'll get a preview of, you know, your your device. So the main one at the top here, 4K PCIe, we've got a preview window with the Sony camera. We're going to choose the maximum resolution, which is 4K 30 frames. So we're going to choose the resolution type uh, 3840, 2160. We're going to match the frame rate. We're going to go ahead and choose the format, press OK. Let me just make sure the frame rate set as well. And we'll press OK and we'll resize this window now. So let me just bring that up again because you might not might not have been able to see it. But if we just double click on the Pango PCIe, you'll see here, let me just make this a little bit smaller so you can see in the frame with everything else going on. Let me just move things around a little bit. Um, but you can see here, Pango 4K PCIe capture, Resolution type, we've got it set to custom. Resolution 3840 2160. FPS is 30. Video format is NV12. And then everything else is basically set to default. And then we can go ahead and just press OK. There is a bunch of other things you can do here if you want to, but we're going to leave it default for the moment and press OK. And now what you can see is a bit of a comparison between the Logitech webcam and my Sony A7S II. We're doing a display recording and this is all working flawlessly, recording in 4K on a pretty high-end PC. Um, if you want to know the minimum specification is you have to have at least an i5 CPU, so at least a quad-core CPU and four gigabytes of RAM. Um, um, for me, you know, this is definitely not an issue to run. I've got a 5900X CPU, plenty of power, a 2070 Super Graphics doing all of the encoding, and this is a 4K lossless recording, and it's completely smooth as silk. So really, really good product. I've been using this now for a few weeks and haven't had any issues at all, and it's been super reliable. The only thing that you might want to do is if you're, you know, taking a console in, is just changing that resolution and then making sure that the output is going to be going to the monitor that you're going to be facing and you're going to be playing on. So that's really the only other thing that you might need to do if you're going to be playing on a console. But Guys, let me know what you guys think of this product from this uh, awesome, awesome company called Pengo. Big thank you to Pengo for sending this product over to me, over to me uh, for me to use it really and for also to let me create more content and make this video for you guys to help you with you know content creation or streaming. So massive shout out to Pengo for that one. Um, if you guys have any questions about this video, feel free to hit me up in the comment section. There's a link to my Discord as well if you want to come over and chat with everyone else in the community. And I'm live every Friday night on YouTube as well. So plenty of ways for you guys to get in contact with me and ask me questions as I try and answer as many as I can. Um, it's a bit of a challenge, but I'd love talking to you guys and hearing what you have to say. So thanks once again for watching this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.